الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعد ما بعد أن سترز as I talk to you today there is a war happening in Ukraine which is completely captured the attention of the world and everybody is uh, focused on it and uh, it seems almost as if this is the first time that war is happening but we know that there has been a war happening and going on in Yemen for the last five years which uh, a UN estimate is that it's killed over probably 400,000 people and uh, all of these estimates are estimates they are not actual counts and the actual count is more than likely much bigger than that yet nobody talks about that war because may Allah protect us from ourselves uh, that war the, the people getting killed there are uh, brown people and they are not white people they don't have blonde hair and blue eyes and uh, so their lives seem to be of less value than the lives of blonde hair and blue-eyed people um, I in my view the life of in, or in, not only my view in, in, in Islam the ayat of Surah Al-Maida, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that if one single individual, and Allah did not say blonde eyes, blue eyes, uh, black uh, color, white color, or anything, if one single individual, one human being, not Allah didn't even say Muslim or not Muslim, anybody, if one single human being is killed unjustly, it is like the killing of all of humankind. And if the life of one individual is saved, it is like saving the lives of all of humankind. Uh, this is the standard of Islam. Islam is not just non-racist, Islam is anti-racist. There is not only, uh, in Islam, not only is there a, uh, is there a positive value of, be, of not being racist, but there is a negative value of being racist, meaning that if you are racist, then you attract the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The very fact, the very first um, sin uh, and crime committed was by Iblis, by Shaitan, where he refused to uh, worship, uh, refused to uh, make sajda to Adam alayhi salam and refused to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, uh, his, his excuse was an excuse which today, if you look at it in, in, look at it in that context, it's an excuse of racism. Uh, he said, Khalaqtani min, min, uh, min nar wa khalaqtahu min teen. He said, I, am, uh, I have been created, you have crea you created me from uh, fire and you created him, Yani Adam alayhi salam, from clay. So he's saying my race is superior to his race. And now this is a, a statement of racism. So therefore it's uh, something that Islam has condemned from the word go. And, uh, and, but this happened now, the point I'm making here is that all of this big war which is happening, if you take that war, now, uh, Putin is the guy uh, who is the, the, the puppet master for that. Uh, but obviously, he's not the only one implicated. Uh, similarly, there are others in the war in Yemen and so on. The point being that if you think about it, all of these people, whether it's Putin or whether it is uh, Narendra Modi or Donald Trump or uh, Nelson Mandela or... Uh, Mother Teresa or, you know, whoever, uh, Abdul Sattar, uh, Idi, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, anybody, there was a time when they were children. There was a time when they were little boys, little girls, when they were children. And they wrote their script and um, their parents wrote their script and they added to that script. And what the world is facing today is decisions being taken by those children. Right. But those are decisions are being taken today, so the children are not children anymore. But at one point they were children. So it bears thinking about and asking ourselves, what if these children had been raised differently? What if these children had been raised to respect other people, to be compassionate, not to just chase money and power at any cost? What if these people were, uh, were raised in a way where they felt responsible for themselves where they where they knew uh, that they are accountable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
from whom nothing is hidden. This is a, this is the whole issue of, of uh, rearing a child. So when you are raising children, don't just look at the child and say, oh, well, you know, my little boy, my little girl, uh, who is five years old, four years old, three years old, whatever. No, you are looking at a future global leader. No matter what position they are in, they are future global leaders. Some may make it to leading countries. Some other may, some others may become uh, founders of empires, uh, but and and others may raise some may, may raise their own children. So all that they may do in their life, for example, is to be a good mother and a good father. And believe me, that is the probably the most important uh, role uh, and responsibility that they could probably. Uh, fulfill and I would say it's far far more important than uh, running a country uh, because this is the lives of people and so the, the, the thing the thing here is to if, if you look at the world today uh, I don't think there's a single human being anywhere in the world who's satisfied and happy with the way the world is running except the uh, the, uh, the actual criminals who are creating this 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 veil of misery that we are faced with but all ordinary people are all of them every single one of them anywhere in the world is dissatisfied to some degree with how the world is is being run i'm not talking about you know momentary uh, happiness with something alhamdulillah people who are who who uh, are connected with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they always make shukr but the fact is that there are problems and these problems all of them these have not come out of the blue they haven't come out they come from krypton or something with a superman these are problems that we have created for ourselves it is these hands which created the problems and the and because of this we are the ones who are suffering there's there's no third part third party there's no somebody else who's suffering we are suffering and because we are and and, and therefore this is the good news is that if since the problems that we created are our own problems and we are suffering so therefore we can also create their solutions we can create solutions to those problems which will save us from that suffering i think this is something which is extremely important for us to keep in mind uh, so that we don't get uh, you know uh, so that we we, we uh, don't lose sight of the critical importance of this job of raising uh, good children uh, who will be a credit to us and a satkhatu jariya for us now life is full of decisions and therefore uh, there is seldom a time in our lives when we are we are when we aren't grappling with one tough decision or another now whether it's related to work or family or to any one of the countless other aspects of life we constantly find ourselves asking questions like should i or shouldn't i or should i go in this direction or that direction uh, we go back and forth between what seems to be equally good opportunities and sometimes this is uh, even more confusing because to choose between uh, two opportunities one of them is clearly good the other one is clearly bad is not difficult i mean this is uh, this is easy but two apparently equally good opportunities i remember when i first went into uh, in, when i first decided to be an, an entrepreneur and went into independent consulting it was 1994 uh, literally, I mean, I was in. I was in that. Uh, I started my company, and 1994 was a, financially speaking a very very difficult year because I had no business. Uh, I was still trying to, you know, sort of uh, struggling very hard to make ends meet. Um, there were months uh, when the maybe two three days before the rent was due uh, on our apartment, we didn't have the money to pay the rent. But alhamdulillah, Allah, Allah Taala. Uh, is the one to to always help so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, always ensured that we never uh, defaulted on the rent we always Allah gave us the money to pay the rent on time but that we lived with that anxiety the, will it happen we don't have now through all of that the um, and, and, and at that time when I was in the middle of this anxiety I go I did a uh, an assignment for a company which had newly come into the into India. Uh, this was in Bangalore in India. So there was this uh, Swedish or rather Swedish head uh, for a uh, cell phone company which had recently come in. And that Swedish head, he liked me and he liked my work so much that he offered me a job. He said, why don't you be uh, the head of uh, Vice President Human Resources for our company? And what he offered me in uh, in pay was uh, absolutely astronomical from in 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 those in, in terms of the salaries of those days 
uh, it was very, very, it was like a, if he had given me a, a blank sheet of paper and said, uh, write down your, you write a number, I would not have written what he was offering me. So now I had this dilemma. I I am I am just starting out as an entrepreneur, uh, so it's a good choice. Alhamdulillah, I'm happy about that. But at the same time, I'm getting a job now in a in a corporate organization, uh, which on the face of it will take away all this anxiety of uh, you know house rent and whatnot. And the job came with a house and it came with a car and blah blah. Now it was therefore a very tough decision for me because I was choosing between two good options. One option was to be, continue to be an entrepreneur and the second option was to become uh, to go back into the corporate world uh, but to a very nice uh, very nice job uh, needless to say i continued uh, i mean at the end of that i, I did take a decision uh, and and i thanked him and i said i'm sorry but i will not take he was very happy he, he told me you know he said you know i respect you because you have uh, shown that you have the grit and the gumption to stay uh, with what you have decided and he said i'm sure that this will be something which is uh, which will be very beneficial for you. So this is something that we have all the time. Is it good? Is it not good? What shall I do? Uh, so between two good options is always difficult to judge. We also live in a world where access to information is ever easier and faster and more comprehensive. Um, our smartphones today are the substitute for a phone, for a computer, for a for a radio, for a television, for you know, for everything except uh, uh, except except sort of sort of person face to face contact. Even that with, with video conferencing, with chats, uh, you know, video calls. Uh, there was a time when you when you had to to do a video call, you had to go into a special studio and whatnot. Today you do it on your phone. Um, so it has become very. Uh, lots and lots and lots of data as a matter of fact it's, it's, it's compulsive it is addictive and it's or it's very intrusive uh, what what uh, this information and data does to us There's a huge penetration of technology uh, which has made life easy and far more complex very complex we are deluged with information on a daily basis uh, but the re result is for most people uh, they are left bewildered and they are unable to make sense of what they are seeing or reading and uh, the result is a society that's for the most, most part ill-informed very very ill-informed uh, if uh, if one is to translate uh, information as understanding most people simply do not have the tools to make sense of what they are presented with uh, it's therefore necessary very necessary for parents to equip their children with these tools and i believe there are two tools which are critical to this process and one is uh, and, and that process is integrity and a focus uh, these are the two tools integrity and focus uh, on creating a legacy now let's look at integrity uh, i define integrity as the willingness to become a standard bearer for your beliefs and values to be willing to be held accountable for them and to have the confidence that you will not be found lacking uh, when that accountability when you are called to account. Now, integrity is the honesty to be true to yourself, to have complete congruence between belief and thought and word and action. Now, this is very, it's easy to say, it's very difficult. We believe something, uh, we think and the thought sometimes now changes and we still, we still claim to hold the same belief but when we, when we are talking now, you are talking in a different way. Either you have softened or you have hardened or something or you have changed completely and then of course action is even more complex. Now to live what you believe, so first of all is congruence between belief and thought and word and action and then to live what you believe in and value. This is integrity, to do that the walk and the talk must be the same. The, the, the finest example of this is the life of Rasulullah where Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa uh, he, he, she said that he was the walking Quran. So here is the Quran which is the belief and uh, here is the life of Muhammad Sallallahu which is a reflection of this belief. So in the Quran, if I take anything in the Quran and I say, well, how is it to be applied? What does it look like when it's being applied? I have to go no further than the seerah, uh, the, the biography and the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is the meaning of integrity. So I define uh, integrity to 
uh, something where I, I, I say it's something which defines and answers this question, what do I want to be remembered for? So the integrity is the ability to look at yourself in the face and accept your mistakes and not make excuses. Uh, it's the willingness to accept responsibility for your words and actions and their consequences and to make amends if those are uh, if those consequences are undesirable. Uh, the second uh, criterion for decision making is to differentiate uh, between short term and long term and to visualize what the long term effects of present decisions are likely to be. Now this is very important because many times in the interest of, uh, of, of you know, urgency, of expediency, of all kinds of reasons we give ourselves, we take negative and, and we take very um, short sighted uh, short term decisions and then we feel very surprised when the long term results are bad. Take, take today, if you, if you look globally, if you look at it, uh, take the, the issue of, for example, global warming, uh, take the issue of, uh, of, of garbage, of how, how garbage is, is, uh, is disposed and so on. Take the issues of, of trees, of uh, uh, environmental uh, degradation. All of these are the results of bad short term decisions. They resulted in uh, very, very evil long term decisions. But those bad decisions short term, they were not bad by themselves because they were taken because they seemed to be good. They seemed to be more convenient and easier and so on. But whatever is easy is not necessarily the best thing to do. And that's very difficult to actually practice. Uh, as Muslims, uh, we need to remember that one day we will be called to account before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everybody will be called to account, but except that we uh, we accept it and we claim to accept it. Um, and therefore, we need to be clear about what we choose to do and what we, what we choose not to do. So children must be, thought, must be taught to analyze their options in terms of their potential consequences. And while we have no knowledge of the unseen or the future, uh, a good analysis can help us to see possible scenarios and to decide intelligently between them. When this is done, it is essential to focus on the long term and not do things which may seem beneficial immediately but are likely to have negative consequences in the long run. One of the big places where this shows up very clearly and painfully is in the area of marriage. People get married for all the wrong reasons, all the wrong short term reasons and then they pay for it for the rest of their lives or, or for as long as that marriage lasts. Uh, completely unnecessary. It, it could have been done, uh, the marriage could have been done or not done with a little more thoughtfulness and it could have benefited everybody but that thoughtfulness doesn't come. Uh, almost every national or international problem that we face today is a result of making short-sighted decisions for short-term gain. Easily avoidable if only the focus of decision making had been to create a legacy of honor. And that is what we need to keep in mind and say, what is my legacy? What am I leaving behind when I go? Right? Um, very important area to focus on and I don't need to uh, really emphasize it for Muslims, which is to connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is Tawheed and Ubudiyya. Tawheed is the belief and Ubudiyya is the manifestation of that belief. So Muslim children must be taught to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They must be introduced to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to His glory, to His majesty, to, the, to His accounting on the Day of Judgment, to the duty that we owe to Him, to be grateful for all that He has given us and to judge ourselves by integrity with which we fulfill this, this duty. They must grow up with a profound sense of ubudiyat, of uh, being a slave of Allah, of uh, being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of worshipping only and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, they must self profound sense of being Abdullah and Amatullah whose only purpose in life is to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely in everything that they say or do. Muslim children must grow up hearing the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the recitation of his word in all its power and glory and majesty. They must grow up uh, hearing the name of, of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the stories of his life. Muslim children must grow up with the confidence in their deen of being proud of their deen, of being confident in their deen, of being confident of their identity as Muslims, with pride in, of being Muslims, with their hearts beating for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
and with the love of Rasulullah and a sense of belonging to the global brotherhood of Islam, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's very very important. Sometimes these seem to be small things that they're not. My Sheikh is to say, talk to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Tell Allah subhanahu wa taala your story, right? Just tell, talk to Him in, in in your own language, and talk to Him in your own way. Say, Ya Allah, I'm like for example, if you're going to the masjid, say, Ya Allah, I am going to the masjid to pray. Allah knows this. Allah is seeing you doing that. But this is your your contribution and your your connection with Him. You say, Ya Allah, I am going to the masjid to to pray. Please um, help me to pray in a way that you love that prayer. Help me to pray in a way that you like. Right? Make my prayer full of sincerity, full of ikhlas. Make my prayer such that you will be pleased with that prayer. But that's why I'm praying. Why, why am I praying? I'm praying because I want my Rabb Jalla Jalla to be pleased with me. So ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for His help. Say, Allah, please save me from Shaitan. Save me from all sorts of uh, you know distractions and influences of Shaitan. Similarly, going to school, say, Oh Allah, hope make this day the best school day of my life. Open my heart to knowledge. Make make it easy. Make make my mind give me the intelligence. To easily understand what is being taught, to retain it in my mind, to understand it, to be able to contribute positively in the class. Talk to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? Make du'a to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. My Sheikh used to say that you know we we'll, we complain about society. We say, oh, our society is so bad and this and that, and there is this sin everywhere and what not. And then we commit sins. So we fall into we fall into sins. We do things which are haram. We know it is wrong, but we still do it. Right? For whatever reason, we give ourselves all kinds of excuses. Oh, this happened, that happened. So my Sheikh used to say, now if you go before Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala on the day of judgment, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, so what happened? Why did you do that? You say, you say, Allah, what can I do? You know, this society was so bad and it was so poisonous and toxic and blah blah what not. And uh, I tried my best, but you know, I I uh, committed this sin, that sin, what not. You you know you know why you committed the sin and so forth. Uh, we know also that many times we commit a sin deliberately, knowing it is wrong. But anyway, you are making this excuse to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Why is this to say? Then supposing Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, okay, so all of this, uh, what you said, if this is the case, did you ask me for my help? Did you ask me for my help did, when you were leaving your house? Did you say, oh Allah, I am going into a world which is full of fitna, which is full of haram. Please guard my eyes so that I do not see anything haram. Hide it from me, right? Hide it from me. I, it's not even. I should not even be put in a position where am I lowering my eyes or not? Am I am I looking down or no? Just hide it. Let me not see anything haram. Let me not hear anything haram. O oh Allah, help me that I never speak any lies. That I speak only the truth. That I speak with adab. That I speak with 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 concern. Help me, give me opportunities to show concern for others. Let give me opportunities, opportunities to help others. Do we make this do? Did, did we make this do? If Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Did you make? Did you make this do? Did you did you make? Did you ask me for my help in this bad so-called bad society that you are going into? What is the answer? Do we do that? Do we do that? We have to ask this. When we leave the house, Bismillah, it's tawakkul to Allah. Wala hala wala quwata illa billah. I am beginning the name of Allah. I have tawakkul to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and only Allah can do everything. We have to ask. We have to build, and help our children to build a relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. I have told this story many times, and may Allah bless those people. I mean, I have lost contact with them, uh, wherever they are. May Allah bless them. I recall this so vividly. There was this friend of ours who was a friend meeting. I mean, that's why. I mean, if he was, if if we were really, you know, if I knew him that well, I would not have lost contact. But this is a uh, helpful gentleman. So he was taking us, uh, me and and my friend, to from point A to point B, New York, and uh, we were driving. Uh, and his little son, who was about five years old, he was in the car. So at one point, before we came to a particular. Uh, exit. This little boy said. Uh, he asked his father. He said, "Baba, did uh, Allah put in your heart?" So I was very surprised. I said, "Did Allah put what in your heart?" Uh, his father says, "You know, we have uh, brought them up, my children." He says, "This boy, 
and other his other siblings he said we have brought them up my wife and i to ask allah for anything they want so anything he like if he if he wants a chocolate he will ask his mom mom his mom will say ask allah if allah puts in my heart i will give you so to the little to the extent that little fellow would go and put his musalla and he would sit on the musalla and make dua to allah subhanahu ya allah please make my mother give me chocolate now this might seem funny but the thing is this is how uh the the at at a, at a very early age this consciousness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their lives is inculcated so on that day he said the father said uh, he said i knew i was going to pick you up and take you so this little fellow he has a friend who lives in a town which we are passing or we are going to pass so he said can i come and go to my friend's house so i said to him you can come <coughs> in the car uh um, make dua if allah puts in my heart then i will take the exit and drop you and pick you up on the way back or uh, if allah does not put in my heart i just come come along for the ride so he is asking me now because he knows where the exit is so he is asking me now did allah put in my heart so i asked him just did allah put <laughs> put me yes alhamdulillah now the point is that this is how you get them connected so that they will come when he will ask allah subhanahu wa taala and that is why uh the my chef used to say that even in the midst of the fitna allah will keep you clean in the midst of all the uh, turmoil that is happening allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you in the midst of uh, difficulties allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you ease if you keep asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because ease and difficulty is in the hands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not because of circumstances allah subhanahu wa taala is the creator of the circumstances so my my chef is to say okay, it will happen things will be happening there will be difficulties things will be happening uh, negative things will be happening to others but they won't happen to you right like it's like it's like saying you are going in a in a bad uh, uh, environment uh, in 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 so you know it's say it city center in the middle of the night or something Uh, and we know that in this place in that situation people get mugged and uh, dropped and so on but you will not be mugged you will be protected because you are connected with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are asking for allah's protection ya allah help me ya allah help me ya allah help me ya allah i'm in this bad place please help me so it's very important to keep on asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now we inculcate the love of allah the glory and magnificence of allah in the hearts of our children in two ways one is through the recitation of quran so through specific focus on the ayat of the quran where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described himself and no one can describe allah like he described himself so read those ayat let them read those ayat reflect on those ayat and say that ask them this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying uh, how, how does this come across to you right uh, so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said uh, he who al malik he allah is the king allah is the is the ruler now how does that manifest in your life do you feel that allah is the ruler how do you feel allah is the ruler if i truly feel that allah is the ruler then i cannot commit anything which allah does not like right so this is a protection when we feel the glory and magnificence of allah in our lives we cannot do anything which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like today we live in a world which is so full of uh, it's, it's not just full of uh, of sin and and wrong doing but in many cases uh, sins and wrong doing is committed with full and total conf- confidence and those who stand for the truth are the ones who are running uh, running fearfully right who are worried whereas in reality it should have been the opposite people who are doing good should have had the confidence and people who are doing evil should have been running Uh, running scared today it's the opposite today people who are indulging in evil are doing it openly without absolutely there's no there's no shame there is no haya there is there's nothing there absolutely no problem this is our right how can it be your right to commit sin but this is the world we are living in so now if you want your children to have the right tarbiya if you want your children to be protected from such an environment then you have to inculcate in them the connection with allah subhanahu wa taala 
the confidence in Allah, the confidence in the power of Allah, that nobody can harm except Allah, if Allah, except unless Allah wills, and nobody can benefit except Allah wills. La nafi wa la dharra illa Allah. La ilaha illa Allah. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. This is the confidence. If you don't have, if you don't create that confidence, then the children will run. run they will run away from goodness into evil. And they will be afraid to uh, express themselves in a way that is to be done. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to raise children like that. And for that, connect them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jalla jalla. وصلى الله على نبينا الكريم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين برحمه الله وبركاته